Hi, nice to meet you. Um, my name's Charlie, and this is probably my first video. Uh, it's going to be a book review on relationship marketing. It's a marketing book by Regis McKenna. And uh, I just wanted to talk about it because uh, it, felt, it really changed the way I thought about how business works. Uh, just uh, many of uh, Regis McKenna's like uh, friends, uh, acquaintances, like a lot of his, a lot of the people he mentored, uh, really changed the way I thought. Um, and I am in no way a person credible to actually give business advice. Uh, I'm just a kid, 20, 23 years old, just trying to get by, uh, still just educating myself, uh, hopefully making a good company in the future. So all I do, all I can do is this. Uh, I've done sales before, but only for my own lessons, like uh, for my guitar lessons or my, uh, I teach English here sometimes in Korea. And you know, you have to do some sales by yourself. You can't, nobody else is gonna do it for you. Um, I was so interested in marketing uh, aside from sales because especially this book there are a lot of marketing books like uh, uh, Seth Godin uh, maybe Dan Kennedy Frank Kern uh, I, I honestly I, I don't know very much uh, sorry this is my first video I, I just don't know what to say but it is, it is going to be a book review how I felt about the book and uh you know, it's mainly for my blog, this video. And it's, it may be, be long, maybe like uh, 20 minutes. Because I've really read it deeply. Uh, there are no book that I ever not read deeply. Um, so who is Regis McKenna? Well, Regis McKenna is a person uh, who was a mentor for Steve Jobs especially in the early years of um, Apple Inc. Uh, Incorporated. And uh, I, I recently watched this video from Steve Jobs where he thought, I mean, I think he, it was after he was fired from Apple. And he said uh, that he felt like Regis McKenna was one of the most prominent minds regarding, uh, at least in the 90s, uh, marketing. And, you know, at that time, you know, selling computers, personal computers, it was not really geared towards uh, uh, customers, uh, just it, it, the customers that were just... Uh, normal. It was usually geared for, computers were for businesses. Therefore, uh, IBM, uh, Xerox, I mean, those guys really dominated the market, uh, not for the customers, but for businesses. But it was from, but it was about in the 70s when Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak decided to make a personal, uh, make computers personal. Uh, hence the name personal computers and Regis McKenna first met Steve Jobs in the 70s because Steve Jobs you know he knew everybody in um, Silicon Valley because uh, he was always interested in computers and interested in electronics and he never ever hesitated to ever ask questions uh, about anything about business or electronics uh, I actually got introduced by this book by uh, reading this uh, book called uh, Becoming Steve Jobs or I don't know if it's Becoming Jobs I, I'm not sure 
Um, if I can really show you the interview from Steve Jobs, he's talking about Regis McKenna, it would be very interesting. Uh, Steve Jobs and Um, so somewhere brand. here, um, so Regis was one of the key um, marketing uh, architects of Apple, and really had a lot to do with our success. And Steve Jobs says that when he and Steve Wozniak were trying to get their personal computer company off the ground, they turned to Regis McKenna. McKenna played important roles in everything from the design of the now famous Apple logo to directing a legendary, well-planned strategic campaign that launched the Macintosh computer. Regis is the best strategic marketing person I know of. And that makes him one of the best strategic business people that I know. It was clear after you met him that he was the one you wanted to work with. I mean, I tend to agree with Steve. <laughs> it was clear when you met Regis McKenna, he was clearly he was the one that you wanted to work with. Yeah, I mean, if you read this book, you just feel like you want to work with him. Why? Because uh, he's not too overly statistical. Uh, he doesn't talk about math like many marketers or a lot of business people would think uh, who that business is all about. And probably a lot of it is. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you watch a lot of Steve Jobs interviews, uh, he, he really talks about what it means to do marketing. And he, he really hated relying on market research, which is interesting. You would always say, oh, people don't know what they, what they want until they see them. Isn't that a very famous phrase from him? You just go to Google and just write, uh, people don't know what they want. They only know what they want until they see what they want. I mean, just write that phrase right there and you'll just know uh, who actually said that. Um, uh, that's probably, influenced mostly by Regis McKenna. Uh, so from what excerpt in uh, Becoming Steve Jobs book that made me so inspired to even just pick up the f this freaking book, this freaking long fucking like, and like, it's a short book, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but, but it didn't even sell in my, con my country. Korea. This book didn't sell because it's a very rare book. It's in the 90s book. I, I had to buy it from Amazon. Uh, an old one. A used book for about $3. But the shipping was about $10, so I paid like $13. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. I think it was a woman. You know, quite ambitious. Just trying to write everything that she learned from this book which is very inspiring isn't it and this is my writing because i've learned a lot and actually like i didn't write any of my thoughts i don't really write my thoughts <laughs> in books i just write whatever really uh made me think the phrases that i that made me think i just write it down next to it it's just how i how i roll thing roll with things um, you do what you want with your books. And, uh, okay, from Becoming Steve Jobs, uh, this excerpt really inspired me to actually find this book. Um, there was Bob Dylan. I, that, that was so memorable. <laughs> I don't know. Bob Dylan, uh, Ram Dass. If you know Ram Dass, he's like a spiritual teacher in the 70s, really uh, pioneering this uh, psychedelic a mushroom movement, you know, for a lot of college kids and this for hip, for hippies, Steve Jobs was very much uh, of hippie. Um, when he was about 21 years old, he he went to this uh, uh, this group that was trying to cure. I think it was AIDS, something about Africa with you know diseases. You know, like what do Bob, what does Bob Dylan or Ram Dass know about? Uh, marketing. They, they don't know shit about marketing, right? They, they, I mean, at least I assume so. And when Steve Jobs went in there, nobody knew Steve Jobs. But Steve Jobs was probably a millionaire, wasn't he? Uh, when he was that age, because of, you know, 
partly because of himself, but mostly because of Steve Wozniak helping him out. You know, being a millionaire, but being also being unknown, uh, you know, he, he was quite arrogant as a young kid uh, in that group meeting talking about marketing. And these guys like Ram Dass and few doctors and uh, Bob Dylan must have said some stupid shit. <laughs> that Jobs was quite angry about. And then in that book, Jobs was like, well, it got really riled up arguing with these groups of people uh, how to market their nonprofit organization organization uh, to get donations to get money uh, to help the disease he was saying if you guys are gonna say stupid shit all the time uh, go, uh, I'm gonna leave and if you're gonna learn from somebody you gotta learn from the best and the best person in marketing is Regis McKenna and I can bring him for you uh, for you lots that's what he said to all those uh, top tier uh, Bob Dylan and Ram Dass guys and it said that Steve Jobs just cried in his car after that <laughs> that was fucking hilarious it was, it was really it was funny just reading that excerpt and I was like uh, you know I wasn't really concerned about him crying I was really concerned about who the hell is Regis McKenna? And I and, and I searched on YouTube. Who the hell is this guy? And uh, well, he, he wasn't that famous. I don't know why. I, I really don't know why. No, why he's not that famous? Why this guy has no name? Is it because he's an old man? Does marketing in the nineties and eighties? not uh, work out in the 20th, 20, 21st century. I mean, I, I did read Seth Godin a little bit. I mean, it, it, kind of, it practically sounded the same, you know, If I, when I'm reading this book. Of course, it's kind of outdated a little bit, but uh, it, it kind of sounded the same to me. Anyway, you know, Steve Jobs in the 90s, after he got fired, and even when he was only 21 years old, before he got fired, he kept saying, this guy's the best. I mean, like, then who the hell am I going to learn from? Marketing. Who are you going to learn from? You know, the audience of this video. Who, who, who are you going to learn from? I mean, from some nobody? Or some, or some guy who actually made results with some businessman? And yeah, marketing for uh, computers, in, this, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, it's very different from what you're marketing. Maybe you're a teacher, maybe you're a, a, trying to sell your book, maybe you're trying to sell sell wine in your liquor shop, you're trying to sell bicycles, I, 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 don't, I don't know what you're trying to sell. Of course, it's going to be a little bit different, but this guy made the results, so I was like, okay, I'm going to fucking, I got to have to read this guy. And the introduction has become very long. Still, you know, I hope I kind of convinced you how important this guy is. At least, uh, I mean, I don't think this book doesn't sell recently. I, I, I wouldn't say it would sell in your local bookstore. Of course, not, in, not outside America. Like a crazy guy like me who would buy it on Amazon used. Uh, not even America would sell this in local bookstores, maybe libraries. Um, so, a short, sharp slap in the face of conventional marketing thinking. Successful strategies for the age of the customer. You know, I'm planning on just reading what I've written because it's not my thoughts that I've wrought, writ, written in this book. It's all the phrases that were already in this book that I really thought were inspiring or it's going to inspire a lot of uh, my way of doing business or maybe how you do business to do better. Uh, another thing was 
what was I gonna say? Yeah, I was gonna say, um, please read that book called Becoming Steve Jobs. You know, I, I, I sound like a Steve Jobs fanboy. Maybe I am, I don't give, I really don't care. Uh, it's just kind of how my mind works. I'm very loyal to just one person. That, that, that's that been how I've been living my whole life. I'm, I think it's one of my strengths where I, I'm very focused on one person. <laughs> why, 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 why all of a sudden are you talking about this, Charlie? Eh, fuck you. I'm talking about this because I, I like to. Anyways, uh, uh, I read the Walter Isaacson Steve Jobs biography. It's nice. It's nice, it, but it's too it's too objective. It doesn't really show the personal sides of that man. While becoming Steve Jobs is all about the personal side. It's all about the personal side of him, and 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 the and the and his personality really reeks out just by reading those texts from uh, uh, from Brent Schindler. I think his the author's name is Brent Schindler. Becoming Steve Jobs. I mean, please read that book. Uh, it gives so much advice on business. Uh, not that I'm a really good businessman. I'm not at all. Uh, I'm just a guy who's trying to learn. Just a little guy trying to educate himself. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay, and enough with the intro. Let's talk about the content of this book. Okay, it says a short, sharp slap in the face of conventional marketing thinking. Yeah, it is. It's, it, it's. The title is Relationship Marketing. It's, 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 so what is relationship? Relationship is not about manipulation, is it? Like if you're, try, if you're trying to be with someone, if you're trying to make a relationship with someone, you're not gonna manipulate that person because you're in the relationship. You're not gonna try to uh, put oh, put your agenda first against that person if you're in a relationship. So, um, Reese McKenna was really emphasizing that uh, maybe in the past, when customers were not really educated, uh, you know, sales techniques, these manipulative ways of you know selling, might have worked. But he's saying, you know, marketing is basically about the relationship with the business owner and the customers. Isn't it? So, uh, you know, customers can be actually those customers itself, but it also can be business partners. Business partners are customers, essentially. Uh, they're just a different form of business part, uh, bis a different form of customer. And the more relationships you build, the better you uh, are going to market your uh, product and service. Uh, in a better way and you know if you're in a relationship you're going to try and uh, be a better person aren't you you know because you're not trying to push your agenda against that person you're not trying to um, you're not trying to take away from that person you're not trying to do make some sales techniques just to get more money no no if you're really in that relationship if you really have friendship with another person if you're if you really love that person, you, you're not only just going to sell that person what you are, but you're going to actually do some R&D, <laughs> research and development. You know, you're trying to make your own product a little bit better. You're going to try to develop yourself. You're going to try to be a better person, aren't you? So uh, a lot of the premise of relationship marketing really talks about that. You know, you're not only going to try to uh, sell that, sell your product to the other person, but you're trying to really make your product as best as possible for the relationship so marketing doesn't marketing isn't separated with uh, products product service versus marketing uh, Regis McKenna really talks about how it's just a philosophy isn't it I mean like I mean there's no right way to do marketing there's no right way to do business you know if it sells then you win if you make money that's that's how you win but if, uh, basically it's just a philosophy and you have to take it with a grain of salt. He's saying like, you have to combine product and marketing together. 
and actually marketing is everything. That's what he says. Uh, one of his Harvard Business Review, uh, there's a PDF in, the, in Google that he wrote, about 10 pages. He says marketing is everything. Why? Because marketing is not trying to sell things to your customers. You're not trying to sell something. You're actually trying to make a relationship. You know, life is, uh, you're trying to, um, that's why you have to combine your product geared towards your customer. I mean, no matter how great your product is, like how, um, how strong, how uh, technically advanced it is, if your customers don't care about it, what are you doing? That's not a relationship. That's just you think doing things that you think you're you're awesome at, but it has no relationship. You're you're just cutting it off. That's why when marketing and product development is separated, there's a problem. Because product people are just going to make their own technically advanced things, maybe even creative. But if it has no relationship with the customer, which is marketing itself, you know, what are you gonna do? You're just your um, it's it's just gonna be a waste of time. Your relationship will be destroyed. But business, why are you making a product in the first place? Why are you selling your own food in a restaurant? If you own a restaurant, why are you uh, why do you sell alcohol if you own a bar? and uh, play music. Why are you doing that? Is it to just show off that you're the best, that you, ha you, ha you won these awards? Uh, maybe your, uh, your beer just tastes the best. It doesn't matter if people like it or not. Your beer t tastes the best. It has all these awards. But if people don't like it, it doesn't matter. It has to really fulfill customer needs first before you can really talk about uh, product development. That's why you have to combine marketing and product. That's why it's a relationship, all right? Marketing is about relationship. It's not trying to sell things. That's what happens when you divide product and marketing. All right, that's, uh, I'm just gonna And also, um, it really made me think about what relationships are too. And I'm, actually, when I was reading this book, uh, sorry to go weird, but well. You know, I was gonna actually read some quotes that I've actually written on this book. But you know, it, it just sounds, actually, it was a little bit too conventional. <laughs> it, it, it just felt like, even if I read it to you, it just doesn't matter. Because it's so out of context when I actually read it. Let's just read one. They must develop relationships with suppliers and distributors, investors, customers. Always in the market environment can quickly alter prices and technologies. Best close relationships can last in a lifetime. Today, we are still in the primitive stages of automating the sales and marketing functions. The marketer will be, will play or stimulate both designer and consumer as children play Nintendo today. If the people who design and manufacture products don't have one foot in the market and one foot in technology, they won't be able to match the techni technical capabilities of the company with the opportunities of the market. 
One spent 80% of his time in the field calling customers and prospects. The other sat at his desk and wrote memos, brochures, and promotions which he sent out to the field. The first product line manager was market-driven and highly successful. The second was market-driven, marketing-driven, and his product line fell to the lowest sales in the company. And he really talks a lot about marketing-driven and market-driven. Uh, you're going to learn about that. Uh, marketing-driven is like the guy who's a typical sales guy, which he denounces a lot in his book. While the market-driven guy is the guy who builds relationships tries not try to man manipulate but tries to actually build a relationship yeah I mean like maybe this quote if a company chooses its silver bullets carefully and gains highly visible acceptance by marketing them it can gain a strong corporate reputation, even if the rest of its product line is only mediocre. In this case, image becomes reality. Well, silver bullets are like one or two key products that will actually position a company uh, to be special, you know, because marketing is mostly about positioning, you know. And he calls it silver bullets. Maybe like uh, you can imagine iPods. You know, it distinguishes from the Walkman in the past and many MP3 players that existed at the time. Uh, and maybe uh, Apple uh, MacBooks, MacBook Air. You know, it was so, it, it was positioning itself as a highly successful. Uh, well-functioning computer a powerful computer but it's so thin you know it always compromised the power it always compromised battery life uh, when the computer got so thin but Apple didn't compromise that's the silver bullet isn't it better access to market and technology information everyone wants to wants a relationship with a leader um, Regis McKenna really talks about leadership in marketing and he says education is as much important uh, for marketing as anything else you know if you if you can educate the customer if you can educate your business partners about your product uh, you know because people aren't really uh, adaptable people people don't like change people want tradition uh, to just hold. But Regis McKenna says, I mean, if you're going to be a leader, if you're, if you're, if you're going to make something innovative, you do have to educate people. And when you educate people, uh, people will listen. And when they listen, they, they're, they're, if they don't get education, they're not going to change. That's how you build leadership. And, uh, yeah. That's why it's so important in marketing. To build lasting positions in the market, companies must build first strong relationships. They must build relationships with customers, suppliers, distributors, resellers, industry influencers, the members of the financial community, they must take advantage of the industry infrastructure, infrastructure, the key people and companies that make the industries tick. With more than 400 different personal computers on the market, people aren't going to decide which one to buy on the basis of advertisements. They are going to rely on the advice they get from resellers, consultants, and friends, and possibly influencers. a nice book honestly I don't know how to really sell this book you know I'm not a salesman I'm not I'm just a guy who's just trying to tell you that I've actually gained a lot of value from reading this book 
I'm sorry I was talking about it so long. And I really didn't talk about the content of the book that much. And you know, what am I? Who am I to actually talk about content? I don't know anything about marketing. This guy knows. You should read this, not rely on me to read this book. Uh, you can get this book from, uh, this doesn't, you can't really get this book from the internet. It doesn't sell on Amazon. I mean, what I mean by is that it's not an ebook. I try to find all, I, I, the reason I had to buy this, even though it didn't even sell in Korea, is because there was no ebook available about this book in, in the whole of internet. And um, I'm glad I actually bought this book. Um, you know, who am I? Like, I'm just gonna talk about this book. If you're a business owner, I mean, I think it's worth a read. Like, even though you're not selling computers. Oh, you might say, oh, it's, it's, it's way different from my comp my industry. Fuck you. No, just fucking read this fucking book. Because, uh, you know, I, I, you got to fucking learn from the best. You know, you're not going to learn from some mediocre motherfucker in the internet who, uh, who doesn't know shit about marketing, who, who never actually made results. This guy actually made results. I don't care. Um, just try to soak deeply into this. You know, you know, again, about me being so loyal, about like, like just trying to learn from one person. I, I feel like a lot of people these days, they don't, they don't really understand what it takes to actually go deep into one thing. You know, just try to go deep into this and try to really learn what the guy is trying to say. What the fuck is he trying to say? You know, like, even when you're reading one quote, um, the biggest problem with market data, therefore, is not the data itself, but rather the judgment made about the data. Historically, businesses have used abstract market data, drawing conclusion without ever touching living, breathing customers. Bare statistics miss nuances of the market. A survey might show that 60% of all customers use a company's product, but a qualitative approach might reveal that the customer are unhappy with the customer service, and that many are considering switching to a competitor. A survey might show that if a certain product were available with certain characteristics, People will buy it, but there is no way of knowing that for sure. There is infinite demand for the unavailable. Well, wow. that was some awesome paragraph that I just read by accident. And yeah, he talks about qualitative and quantitative. So when he talks about data, it's mostly about quantitative data, isn't it? And you know, so much about marketing, people think numbers can really show how good a product is, how great a product is. You know, who made the most money in basketball? LeBron James. Well, let's not talk about LeBron James. I don't like him. Let's talk about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan made most money, at least, you know, I mean, like, not in the NBA. There are people in the NBA who made more than him, but, you know, even as a business, the name of Michael Jordan has become such a, it's, be, it's become a leadership position for the NBA, for basketball. The whole of sports actually think of him as a leader. Why? Was it because he was statistically the greatest? Was Michael Jordan ever statistically the best? No, not ever. Apple was never the st statistically the best. Michael Jordan, Statistically, he was failing a lot compared to LeBron James, compared to uh, Will Chamberlain. Will Cham Chamberlain? I mean, Will Chamberlain has more scores. LeBron James has more assists and scores. Even better field goal percentages, better three-point field goal percentages, and even maybe better clutch percentages in finals. Who? 
people who really play basketball, people who know basketball, just say Michael Jordan is better. Why? Do you think mere numbers can really show how great a basketball player is? You think just dividing up numbers of the scoreboard is going to actually show that this guy is the best? Just putting a ball in the hole, how much you put in and how much you failed, is that really good? Th that's what numbers are. Did you know that? I mean, if you go... If you go uh, quant <laughs> quantum mechanically <laughs> in, in that way, of course, I mean, may maybe we're talking about another subject. But at least for basketball, the statistics there are very... It's not at all quantum mechanical. It's completely... Um, it's too simplified. And so many of business processes... So many business, uh, you know, market research, it's so, it's like basketball percentages, it's basketball field goals. You know, that's what he's saying. You can't really talk about quantitative approaches for marketing. You have to really go for qualitative ones. And what are qualitative? It's intangibles. When people say Michael Jordan was the best, intangibly he was the best. Intangibly. You want to be like that. If you actually have Michael Jordan and LeBron James play one-on-one, -on -one, Michael Jordan will win. Everybody knows that. LeBron James himself will actually acknowledge that Michael Jordan will win him one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe in teams, Michael Jordan will win uh, in teams because Michael Jordan, though he's statistically not as strong, it's the energy behind it, isn't it? It's the intangibles that Michael Jordan has above my LeBron James that everybody just knows intuitively that Michael Jordan is going to win everything in every way against LeBron James. And just see right now, LeBron James, he only won four championships. Michael Jordan won six. Sorry to talk about that. Uh, anyways. It's just so important that we can't just divide up things, uh, how good something is, how good a product, how good a service is, just by, uh, uh, sorry, how good a product or service satisfies customer needs. We can't quantify that. You have to really ask the customers, Re really go deep into them. I mean, don't even, like, you really have to know how their psychology works, you know, interacting with your service and product. And only then will you actually know if your product is good. Not with just some statistical survey. <laughs> Was it good? Yes or no? And of course, a lot of people are just going to say yes. Who the hell would say no? I mean, those statistics will not show anything. Nothing will improve it your uh your performances your uh your product your art it's not going to improve anything you you don't really care when you're just doing quantitatively if you're doing mathematically you don't really care that's what he's saying you, you really got to care like you're in a relationship with your customer because he says marketing is about a relationship marketing is basically basically a relationship between customer and the business. That's why a business is all about the relationship between customer and the business. That's why marketing is everything. That's what's, what he talks about a lot of the time. Um, which I agree a lot. It is a relationship. And... Uh, you know, whether you read this book or not, you know, making a business is mostly, it's not, it's not about, a business is mostly about being an artist, isn't it? It's about making something, making money, uh, productively, right? Not, not, not wasting money. Business is all about using money productively, making money productively, you know?
with small things you create big things that's what a business is it's like it's basically an art if you're trying to make an art uh, you can't be uh, you know you, you have to do the right thing which I think this book really teaches very well um, if you really like this video you know leave a comment or leave a like uh, I enjoyed this book and at least you know read some of this PDF PDFs and in, in Google if you really want to learn from this man and uh, you know watch some videos I think he really teaches a lot of things uh, even though it's a little bit complex you know about computers you know software we, it's hard for us to understand but uh, still even if we're not working in that industry I think it's worth you know going in for well thank you for listening for 41 minutes it was a blast uh, I'm planning on making more videos making more shitty videos I can I'll do it. Uh, thank you.